Hello, welcome back, everybody. This time around, uh, I want to talk about Nuclide, um, which is an IDE we're building at Facebook, built using web technology on top of the Atom text editor. And in particular, I want to talk about Nuclide as a React and Flow IDE, and basically just a JavaScript IDE in general. So first of all, what is Nuclide? We say it's a unified developer experience for both web and mobile. So we're trying to kind of bring together all these different tech stacks that you have to be familiar with to build apps. You might have like a backend written in PHP and a re like React native app or like some native code even. And we're trying to like bring all that together into a single environment. So building Flow and React apps with Nuclide is really fun. And we have testimonials. You all know this guy. He says you should follow him. I agree. He's great. Um, it really is true. You can go for a long time writing code in Nuclide with Flow support and have it work on first try. And there's kind of two ways we achieve that, or Nuclide and Flow achieve that. We prevent errors, and it boosts your productivity. In terms of errors, I made a couple of examples. So first of all, we, we can do complex prop type checking. So here I have an enum prop type and I use the wrong, uh, the wrong value, right? And Flow knows that. So I can go in and fix it. Flow understands null and undefined and all the shades of gray in between. So you never have to worry about like null pointer exceptions anymore. Again, huge productivity boost. I'm just adding a null check here and now Flow is happy. Import export, it's kind of a new syntax with ES6. Sometimes it's confusing. Flow works across your entire code base and it understands import export. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Flow also understands synchronous versus async. And um, if you're using async await, things can be a little confusing sometimes. Here we have a function that returns a number even though technically it's an async function, so it should be a promise. But really this function is just returning a number, so it probably shouldn't be async in the first place. And Flow can juggle all these different types of functions and return types and just make you confident that your code works. So that's the error checking part. There's also a productivity part. If you listen to Jeff's talk yesterday about how Flow works under the hood, there's a bunch of, it's basically a language platform, right, for, for JavaScript. And we can use that to, to get data about our code out and, and use that to enhance the IDE. Concretely, here's a couple of productivity features. Like autocomplete, given an identifier, if we know its type, we can give you smart suggestions about you know, what might be next. Click the symbol and the newly introduced navigation stack, also pretty cool. If you command click, it's a little bit hard to discover, it will jump to the location in the file. And so if you're just reading a new piece of code, it can be really good for just like quickly navigating that. And then the nav stack is just a keyboard combo that jumps back to your previous locations. You basically have like an undo stack, but for navigation. So you can briefly kind of investigate um, you know, a function or something and then jump back. Outline view, another recent addition. Basically, we query flow for the AST of a given file, and then we, we use that AST, or we extract interesting symbols from that and, and render it and let you navigate based on that. It's also really cool if you have tests. It actually works really nicely. It lists all like the test specs. Uh, super useful. And then type hints. Type hints are those little data tip type things that pop up when you're hovering. So if you're reading a new piece of code or you're further down in your editor and you don't see the definitions, you can kind of quickly, quickly see what the type of a given identifier is. And the last feature I want to highlight is a, kind of a recent one, type coverage. So f flow is super valuable if your code base is already typed. So that creates this like chicken and egg problem. And so there's this new feature where we show you the percentage of code coverage. And if you click on the, on the bottom of the status bar, Flow will act, Nuclide will actually highlight the untyped pieces of the code and let you kind of go in and, and fix it. And so if you're at 100% and you do that for every file in your code base, then you can be very, very confident that like your code is probably doing the right thing. So that was building stuff using React and Flow in Nuclide. But I also want to talk a little bit about the inverse, because Nuclide itself is built using React and Flow and Babel. And 
So Nuclide basically consists of, of a huge package on top of Atom that provides a bunch of features, and it's all written in, in Babel and, and Flow. And practically speaking, we support kind of the intersection of the two because like Babel is iterating here and Flow is iterating here, and, and they're not really in sync all the time, but we're at like the common ground. And we use all of the latest and greatest features, or a lot of them, and for good reason. Brief aside, if you had told me in like three years ago that we would be calling this JavaScript, I probably wouldn't have believed you. It, it's, it's pretty amazing, right? Like returning classes, like, I don't know, all, all kinds of stuff. And so this language really is much, much more powerful than what we used to call JavaScript. And it's not just fancy features, right? We're getting a lot of value out of this stuff. For example, so if you're building a text editor, it's a long-lived application. It's not a website, right? It has to stick around. So you gotta clean up your resources. And also, it's super, super I.O. heavy. You talk to network, you talk to files, you talk to flow, um, and you do all kinds of stuff. So just having async await support is, is super powerful. And promises and observables in general are kind of the bread and butter behind this thing. Kind of an aside on, on Atom. So I mentioned that Nuclide is an Atom package, right? And Atom's package API basically the DOM, right? I mean, they have a couple of more explicit APIs, but any package can mess with the DOM, and that's a little bit problematic because the more packages you have installed, the harder it gets to reason about the state of, of the editor and the DOM in general. And so to mitigate that, we're basically trying to build wrappers around a lot of the imperative DOM-y stuff using, for example, React. So we've, here we've wrapped all of the standard Atom UI and like React components that can be easily reused. So if you wanted to extend your IDE and needed some sweet UI sauce on top of that, you could just use these React wrappers. Similarly, we also have services that let you create what we'll call gadgets. It's basically an abstraction around Adam's panes and panels, so you don't need to worry about that. You can just briefly supply a React component and it will pop up in your editor. Similarly to the React component wrapping, most of Nuclide's features that we provide are actually services. So Atom has a service API or service uh, infrastructure where packages can provide uh, kind of different features. And I showed you like type ins and autocomplete and click to symbol and, and type coverage and outline view and the list goes on. Basically every single one of these features is implemented as a service. So if you, the way I like to explain it is like if you, if you picture the list of features as this one dimension, right? And then in Nuclide, we also have a list of languages in the other dimension. We've got like JavaScript and Hack and C++ and Python, and like the list is growing, right? And so we've got features and languages, and we're spanning open this giant Excel grid, and we're trying to fill it with check marks, right? We're trying to build in the, like the, the backend integrations for every single language. And at the same time, we're building support for more languages and support for new features. And so this is exciting. And it's extensible, so you guys can build on top of it. We have lots of APIs. This list is just, it's not complete. You have the, the regular Atom APIs for changing stuff in the text editor. You've got node binding, so you can talk to network and file system. You have UI wrappers, and then all of these sweet IDE um, APIs that you can use to edit files remotely, or stat a file, or call a service, or talk to version control. And we try to abstract it out so it becomes reusable. So Nuclide really is more of a tooling platform than just an IDE itself that can be easily extended. Even if you don't want to extend it and just use it to be more productive in JavaScript, I recommend you check it out and let us know what you think. So APM install Nuclide, or you can install it from the Atom packages view. Um, also check out our Facebook group and docs page on Nuclide.io. And lastly, it's open source, so if you guys want to contribute or Check it out, feel free to do that, and definitely let us know what you think. Thank you.